So the people of Kufa, Iraq, they started to send letters to Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, in which they are say they say they were saying to him, Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, inna bay'anak. We have given our pledge of allegiance to you. We don't want no one except you. On our next, there is no pledge of allegiance towards Yazid. Our pledge of allegiance is only to you. So these letters, they came so much in number to Hussein ibn Ali. They came so much in number. Um, until it reached more than 500 letters. Um, it reached him. All of them from the people of Kufa, and they were calling Hussein, come to us, don't let us down. We don't want Yazid. Yazid doesn't have no weight in our eyes. It's you or no one. So when the letters became too much, Hussein ibn Ali made a decision that he's going to send his own cousin, uh, Muslim ibn Aqil ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, and he's Muslim ibn Aqil ibn Abi Talib. They're cousins. Aqil ibn Abi Talib and Ali ibn Abi Talib, brothers. So he made his decision that he's going to send his own cousin, Muslim ibn Aqil ibn Abi Talib. To do what? To go and look at the matter, revise the situation. And to see what is true or what is not. So Muslim ibn Aqil took the request of his cousin and he made his way to Kufa. So now Muslim ibn Aqil is he's, go, he's going there to be the eye of Hussein ibn Ali, to check out Kufa, to see these people, their, their situation and how they're like. So when Muslim ibn Aqil came to Kufa, he started to ask the people, what is it you guys want? What are you guys up for? The people were saying, we don't want Yazid ibn Muawiyah. We want you, Hussein, we want he, sorry, we want Hussein ibn Ali to come. At that time, Muslim ibn Aqil is checking out Kufa, seeing how the situation is like. He's residing in the house of Hani ibn Urwa. He's in the house of who? He's in the house of Hani uh, ibn Urwa. And the people started to come to Muslim ibn Aqil, to the house of Hani ibn Urwa. They were coming jama'atin wa wuhdanan, in numbers, singles, single people, individuals, dual. They were coming to him. And they were saying, this is the pledge of allegiance of Hussein ibn Ali. Our bay'ah is Hussein ibn Ali. We want no one else. At that current time, Yazid ibn Muawiyah, he placed as a governor and Nu'man ibn Bashir. This noble companion was the governor of Kufa. So Muslim ibn Aqil, when he's coming to Kufa, when Muslim ibn Aqil is coming to Kufa, and he's staying at the house of Hani ibn Urwa, who's the governor of Kufa? And Nu'man ibn Bashir. <laughs> Nu'man ibn Bashir, um, he heard, and it reached him, that Muslim ibn Aqil is Bayna Dahranayhim. That is in the midst of the people that Muslim Aqil came. And that the people are coming to him and they're giving him pledge of allegiance on behalf of Hussein ibn Ali. Things like that did reach him. But Nu'man ibn Bashir pretended and he acted like Ka'annahu lam yasma' shay'an. He pretended like he heard nothing. Nu'man ibn Bashir pretended like he heard nothing. Wa lam ya'ba' bil amr. And he gave no consideration to the matter until some of the people of Iraq, they went to Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Uh, sorry, they went to Yazid ibn Muawiyah, yes. They went to him in Sham. Some people left Iraq and they went to Sham. And they went to, to who? To Yazid ibn Muawiyah in Sham. وَأَخْبَرُوهُ بِالْأَمْرِ And they told him the matter. They told him something is going on, fishy, in Iraq. Iraq. Nu'man ibn Bashir is not really taking the matter too serious. He's not dealing with it as he should. And that people are given some form of pledge of allegiance to Muslim ibn Aqil. Um, so when this, hap when this reached Yazid ibn Muawiyah's ears, Yazid ordered 
that Nu'man ibn Bashir to resign and get off the position. Amara bi'azli Nu'man ibn Bashir. He told him to get down off the position. And he, rec he sent, Yazid ibn Muawiyah sent Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad as the leader of the people of Kufa. He made him, he elected him. And Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he was previously the Amir of Basra. He was previously the Amir of what? Basra. Now what Yazid ibn Muawiyah did was, he added Basra and Kufa together and made the leadership of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Both of them were under his leadership. So he can do, why did he choose him for? لِيُعَالِجَ هَذَا الْأَمْرَ so he, can be, so he can cure the matter. Um, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he reached night time. He came to what? He came to Kufa at night time. How did he enter Kufa? Mutalathiman. He tied um, his, um, uh, his imamah over his face. Covered his face. So no one can see except his eyes. When he went by a group of people, the people would say to him, uh, when he says salam alaikum to them, the people say to him, Wa alaikum salam. Yabna bint Rasulillah, the daughter, the son of the daughter of the Prophet. Yadunnuna, they were thinking it was what? And al Hussein ibn Ali. They were thinking Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad was Hussein ibn Ali. And that they thought that Hussein ibn Ali entered the city of Kufa mutakhafiyan, mutalathiman laylan. They were thinking Hussein was hiding, that's why he came in like that. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad that realized from there. أن الأمر جد the matter is serious وأن الناس ينتظرون الحسين بن علي and the matter is that the people are waiting for Hussein ibn Ali to come so he thought I have to get to the bottom of this situation I have to realize who's part of it who's leading the matter who's doing I have to realize so what did he do he went back to his qasr his palace when he went back to his palace he sent a man by the name of Mi'qil. A man by the name of what? Mi'qil. Who he sent him as a spy. He said to this Mi'qil guy, Go and revive, look at the matter. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. But I want you to bring me news and what's happening. This man, Mi'qil, he went out to... Um, um, to the people of Hussein ibn Ali or the Shia of Hussein ibn Ali the supporters of Hussein ibn Ali or the people of Kufa who were waiting for Hussein ibn Ali he came out and pretended to be a man from Hims a man from Hims and that he came from Hims with how many money? 3,000 dinar that he has why has he got this money for? and this money is it's towards Hussein Ali. And he said, this is my money. Anyone who can show me a place or a way I can aid, I am more than happy. Here I am. I am here. So, as he asked around, he was shown the house of Hani ibn Urwa. He was pointed towards the direction of who? Hani ibn Urwa. Who's Hani ibn Urwa? Hani ibn Urwa is the man who Muslim ibn Aqil is staying at, the house where he stays. So, when he came, this man, Mi'qil, he entered onto Hani ibn Urwa, and who did he find there? He found Muslim ibn Aqil. He gave him a pledge of allegiance, he gave him the 3,000 dinar that he had, and he kept repeating and saying, um, anything you guys require, anything you guys need, I am supporter of Hussein ibn Ali. I am with Hussein ibn Ali. So what did he do? This individual, this Mi'qil, who was a spy for Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he didn't just do it once, but he kept coming and kept coming, and he kept coming and he kept coming until they became very familiar with him and they could trust him. He wanted to build that trust with them. So when he comes, they don't change his story or what they're doing. So they can say anything they want in his presence. So, he would sit there, he would listen to everything they talk about, and he would go back to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and he would tell him what's happening. 
And he would go the next morning and he would do the same and he would go back to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and tell him what's taking place. At this point, Muslim al-Aqil is not aware of this individual Mi'qal who's in the midst of theirs, who's a spy for Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. He doesn't know. So Muslim ibn al-Aqil sends a letter after he realized that the people who gave, gave him bay'ah and the money that's coming through and how the people seem like Muslim ibn Aqil wrote a letter to Hussein ibn Ali and he told him Aniqdim, come forward the matter is ready for you all it requires is for you to take over doesn't need too much frustration or headache you just need to come and the matter just take over Kufa is ready for you Ali uh, Hussein ibn Ali, sorry. Hussein ibn Ali, the day of Yawm al-Tarwiyah. Yawm al-Tarwiyah. Two days after the Hajj is going to take place. When Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wants something to happen, Allah will bring the means in place. Allah is the one who does whatever He wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day of Tarwiyah, Ali, Hussein ibn Ali, when the letters reached him and he read what Muslim al-Aqil told him to do, on the day of Tarwiyah, Hussein ibn Ali, huh? Hussein ibn Ali, and the reason why it was called the day of Tarwiyah, Tarwiyah means the people are getting ready for Hajj. So what they do is they take their camels, they take their riding beasts, and they go out and they water their riding beasts. Tarwiyah comes watering their riding beasts. So when they go to Hajj, they have no other water. Well, one of the signs of the hour, huh? Because the people after that, they have to go to Mina, and they're going to stay in Mina. So the Prophet ﷺ told us the signs of the hour is when there's water present in Mina. When you find water, people having water, it's min alamati sa'a. From the signs of the, the hour. That is from what? The signs of the hour. And now it's so pre prevalent, it's the food's there, everything's there. Whereas before, Yawm al used to be, where people would go, they would get themselves ready for Hajj, put their, everything on their riding beast, feed their uh, camels, and then they would go there expecting to be out there for a very long time. That day where people were preparing for Hajj, Hussein ibn Ali was doing what? He left uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Um, whilst Hussein ibn Ali, or Hussein ibn Ali is making his way and wants to leave, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad realized the story after Mi'qal informed him of everything. But Hussein is unaware of what's taking place now. Hussein only knows the letter that reached him. He's preparing to leave. On the other side, in Kufa, uh, Muslim ibn Aqil and Hani ibn Urwa, their issue became well known to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, um, he requested the people of Kufa, why isn't Hani ibn Urwa, why is he not coming to me, he said. Why doesn't he not want to meet me? Why does he not want to see me? And Hani, on the other hand, he is the leader of his tribe. His people, he's the master, he's the leader, he's the chief of the tribe. He's the, he's the chief of the tribe. So the people of Hani ibn Urwa, his tribe, they said, go to him, he wants to see you. Don't make the matter seem fishy. If you don't go, he's going to realize we're up to something. Just go give him greetings and leave. And he said, I don't think good is going to come from this individual. I don't believe that this individual, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, is going to bring any good. And I don't fear from him, except that he's going to physically cause me harm. And it became what Hani ibn Urwa said. So, Hani ibn Urwa came. When Hani came to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he asked him, he asked him about Muslim ibn Aqil. So Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad knows. He knows everything now. So he asks Hani ibn Urwa, he says, Hani, where is Muslim ibn Aqil? Hani replies by saying, I don't know. When Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad realized that Hani is hiding it and doesn't want to tell, he told Mi'qal to come out. He said, Mi'qal, come out. When Mi'qal came out, Hani was gobsmacked. This is the man who spent days, nights, weeks in, our, in their gathering, listening to everything that they were, they were going to do. Hani realized that everything is a flop now. So, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, Zalim, looks at 
Hani ibn Urwa, and he says to him, do you know this man? Hal ta'arifu? Do you have any understanding of who this individual is? He said, yes, I know him. Hani ibn Urwa realized now he has to talk. And he realized that the matter and the mas'alata kanat khud'ah. He was deceived. Mi'aqal deceived him. فقال عبيد الله بن زياد. He said to عبيد الله بن زياد, "You want me to give you Muslim naqil, right?" عبيد الله بن زياد said, "Yes, I want you to give me Muslim naqil. Pass him over to me." Hani ibn Urwa says, "Wallahi, by Allah, لو كان تحت قدمي, if Muslim Muslim naqil was under my foot right now, ما رفعته. I won't even lift my leg up for you to take him." فضربه عبيد الله بن زياد beat him so badly. ثم أمر بحبسه يعني أوردت him for him to be imprisoned. Here we're gonna learn what happened after Hani ibn Uru was placed in prison. Hani is in prison now. Muslim Aqil realized what took place and why Hani was imprisoned because Hani refused to pass over Muslim Aqil. So what did he do, Muslim ibn Aqil? Muslim ibn Aqil did, he took an army of 4,000 men and he sieged the building of who? Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. He sieged him. Um, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad at that time was with him, he already had with him, Ashrafu nas he had the leaders of the people. On his side, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad were the chief leaders, were on his side. He already thought of this, that this is gonna, it's gonna get to this. He was kind of prepared for it. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. So he already took the hearts of who? The leaders of the tribe. And they have to compare two things. And Muslim Aqil wants money in order to, for the, and for Hussein ibn Ali and for everything. Bani Umayyah, like on the other hand, are ready to pay. They're giving money. Now, this gave Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad the upper hand. So what did he do? Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad ordered the tribal leaders to get take their people back from Muslim Aqil. He said, everyone who is a tribal leader, are you the leader of your tribe? Everyone of your tribe, take them out of the midst of the army. And every mother would come and she would take her child out. The father would come and would take his child out. The tribal leaders would come and they would take their people out. Muslim ibn Aqil. And also, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, the other thing he did was, he promised them that if they don't listen to what he says, that there's going to come an army of Yazid ibn Muawiyah from Sham. And that they're going to be all leveled to the ground. All of them will be done. So Muslim Aqil, Muslim Aqil at this point, he started to lose his army one after the other. He started to lose the army one after the other. The sun, وَمَا غَابَتِ الشَّمْسِ The sun didn't set that day. إِلَّا وَمُسْلِمْ بِمْنْ عَقِيلٍ وَحْدَهِ Muslim Aqil was by himself. From 4,000, he came to 30 men. From 4,000, he turned out to be 30 men. And then that same, that night, those 30 walked away from him and he re remained by himself. Muslim Aqil started to walk inside the city of Kufa, thirsty, hungry, by himself. He doesn't know where to go. He knocked on the door of a woman who was from the people of Min, Min Kinda. He said to her, I want water. She was amazed with his appearance and how he looked. She said to him, and who are you? And then he said, I'm a Muslim Aqil. I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim Aqil. And he told her everything. And that the people of Kufa deceived him. And that Hussein is on his way and is coming. Because he sent a letter to him telling him to come. And he said, I don't believe that except Hussein is on his way. So the woman said, don't worry, sit here. She brought him into the house. She sat him down and she gave him food. She, made, she gave him things to, water to drink. But her son... Her son went and told Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad that Muslim ibn Aqil was in the house. So what did he do, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad? He sent 70 horsemen, equipped, 
and he sieged the house in where Muslim Aqil was in. Muslim Aqil by himself he fought with them. But finally he got tired. Istaslama he gave surrendered to them. Um, and then he was taken to where? فَأُخِذَ إِلَىٰ قَصْرِ الْإِمَارَةِ He was taken to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. When he entered onto Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad asked him, why have you come out? Why have you done, why did you come from where you were? You went, you went Mecca? Why did you come to Kufa? What brought you here? And he said, بَيْعَةٌ فِي أَعْنَاقِنَا There was a pledge of allegiance on our neck with Hussein and Ali. And then Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad said, Oh, do you not have a pledge of allegiance towards Yazid Muawiyah? He said, No. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad said to him, Inni qatiluka, I'm going to kill you. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, when he said that to Muslim Aqil, and I'm going to kill you, Muslim Aqil looked around and he said to him, Da'ni, then leave me, all see so I can give my final statements, my final words. If, you're going to, if you promise that you're going to kill me, allow me to give my final words. So he looked around those who were sitting in the gathering of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. So who, who did he see? He saw Umar ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. He saw in the gather, gathering, he saw Umar ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas who was sitting there. And then he went over to him and he said, Anta aqrabu nasi in minni. You're the closest person to me. In terms of what? Rahiman, in terms of lineage. Ta'ala usika, let me give you my final words. Umar ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas was, as you all know, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad was a tyrant, transgressive individual. He, Umar, ibn, ibn, Umar ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas looked at Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad for permission if he could do that. He told him, You can. Fi janib min dar. He took him towards the corner of the house or the place they were at and he gave him a wasiyah. The wasiyah he said to him, بأن يرسل إلى حسين بأن يرجع. Tell Hussein to come back. Tell Hussein to go back to where he came from, and that nothing awaits him here. وأن وأن أهل الكوفة and the people of كوفة قد خدعوه. They deceived him. They're liars. Muslim Aqil said a statement which is very famous, well known. He said, "إرجع go back. بأهلك يا فامي ولا يغرنك أهل الكوفة. Do not let the people of Kufa deceive you." فَإِنَّ أَهْلَ الْكُوفَةِ قَدْ كَذَبُوكَ وَكَذَبُونِ وَلَيْسَ لِكَاذِبِ الرَّأِي The people of Kufa, they lied to me, they lied to you, and they lied, and they, and they are liars. And for a liar, there is no opinion that you should take from him. A person who is a liar, وَلَيْسَ لِكَاذِبِ الرَّأِي After that, Muslim Aqil was killed. And also one of the things that Muslim Aqil requested from Umar ibn Sa'ad was that if, uh, if this individual, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, kills me, after he kills me, he won't treat my body with respect. So I ask from you that whenever he finishes with killing me, that you take my body and you bury it in the best way. Muslim Aqil, the day of Arafah, he was killed. And, and at that time, Hussein ibn Ali has already left. He left, day of, he left days before that. He left from, from the day of Tarwiyah. Before Muslim Aqil was killed, one day before it, he left. The Sahabas, they, dis they disagreed with Hussein ibn Ali to leave. And they tr a lot of them tried their best to stop Hussein ibn Ali from leaving. From those who stopped him were Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, Abu Sa'id ibn al-Khudri, Abdullah ibn Zubair, even his own brother, Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya, tried to stop him. All of those I mentioned, when they realized that Hussein ibn Ali was trying to go, they stopped him. They said, stay away from the people of Kufa. They are not people you can trust. From them, inshallah, I'm going to read some of their statements. Abdullah ibn Abbas, for example, he said to Hussein ibn Ali, when he went to go, he said to him, Lola, if it wasn't, and Yuzriya be wa bika nasu, let a shab, let a shab, let a shabbath to yadi fi rasika, falam atruk, 
فلم اتركك تذهب عبد الله بن عباس said to Hussein ibn Ali if it wasn't for the people he said if I knew that if I grabbed your hair and your beard and I stuck myself to you huh? and that the people would come out and it would result that you would stay and not go I would have done that and at that point Abdullah ibn Abbas became blind he was blind at that time but he said wallahi I, this is how much I would go to stopping you from going Abdullah ibn Umar he also heard Abdullah ibn Umar heard that Hussein ibn Ali had left and that he's already gone he's already gone he hit the road Abdullah ibn Umar he went after him a distance مسيره ثلاثه ليال ثلاثه ليال a distance of three nights Abdullah ibn Umar went after him and when he caught up with him he said to him aina turid what do you want and then Hussein ibn Ali said al Iraq I went to Iraq and Hussein ibn Ali brought out all of the papers and all of the documents and everything and then he said to him هذه كتبهم وبيعتهم this is their pledge of allegiance this is their books this is their papers look at them this is it Abdullah ibn Umar he said to him لا تأتيم don't go to them Hussein refused except to go Abdullah ibn Umar said to him إني محدثك حديثا I'm going to tell you a hadith I'm going to tell you information إن جبريل أتى النبي I'm telling you a hadith from the Prophet إن جبريل أتى النبي جبريل came to the Prophet فخيره بين الدنيا والآخرة and he gave the Prophet the choice between this dunya and the hereafter the Prophet was given the choice of this dunya or the hereafter the messenger فاختار الآخرة the Prophet chose the hereafter ولم يريد الدنيا and the Prophet didn't want this dunya وإنك بضعة أما وإنك بضعة منه and you are a portion of the Prophet you're the son of his own daughter you're a part of him والله by Allah لا يليها أحد منكم أبدا no one who is from the Prophet will ever gain this dunya never وما صرفها الله Allah did not divert this dunya from you guys عنكم إلا للذي هو خير لكم except that which good is in it for you guys well, you're not going to gain it Hussein it is sunnah of Allah that you're not going to take over فأبا Hussein refused Abdullah ibn Umar hugged him and he cried and he said to him أستودعك I give you a farewell من قتيل from death you're going to die Hussein and he whispered that to his ear when he hugged him and Hussein ibn Ali walked off one of the people who spoke to him was Abdullah ibn Zubair Abdullah ibn Zubair said Aina Tadhab where are you going? Tadhab ila qawm are you going to go to a people? Qatalu abak they killed your father wa ta'anu akhak they also wounded your brother and slandered him la tadhab don't go fa'abal Hussein illa an yakhruj Hussein refused except to go Abu Sa'id ibn al-Khudri he also said what? He said to him, Ya Aba Abdullah, inni laka nasihun wa inni alayka mushfiq. I am a sincere advisor for you and I'm very concerned for you. Qad balagani, it reached me, anna qad katabakum qawmun min shi'atikum. It has reached me that a people from your supporters have written towards you, to, to you. From Kufa, yad'unaka ila al-khuruji ilayhim and they're requesting from you to come to them. Fala taqruj ilayhim, don't go to them. Fa inni sami'tu, I heard, أباك يفاض علي بن أبي طالب أيهدهم إنسان كوفا والله لقد مللتهم وأبغضتهم وملوني وأبغضوني وما يكون منهم وفاء قط ومن فاز بهم فاز بالسهم الأخيب والله ما لهم نيات ولا عزم على أمر ولا صبر على سيف he said by Allah these people have tired me and they have angered me والله these people are not a people who give me a promise and they stick to their words from it Wallahi, anyone who succeeds in this person has reached the pinnacle. Wallahi, these people don't have an intention which is sincere. Wallahi, they don't have no conviction in any matter. Wallahi, they are not a patient people when it comes to battles and fighting. Also, when Hussein ibn Ali was on his way to Iraq, on the road he met the, the famous poet, the Arab famous poet, Farazdaq, Farazdaq, a sha'ir, he's a poet. He met him on the way and they bumped into each other. And then he said to him, 
Hussein ibn Ali said to Farazdaq. Hussein asked Farazdaq and he said, Farazdaq. Sorry, Farazdaq said to Hussein, where are you heading? Where are you going? To Hussein ibn Ali. Hussein said, Iraq. I'm heading towards Iraq. And then he said to him, Hussein then said to Farazdaq, how is the situation of the people of Iraq? And then he said, meaning referring to how are the people of Iraq towards me? If I go to them, are they ready for me? What, what's the situation like? Farazdaq told him a statement which really summarized everything for him. He said, ma'aka, Their hearts are with you. Meaning they love you. Who can hate you? You're the son of the daughter of the Prophet. Who's going to hate you? Ma'aka, their hearts are with you. وَسُيُوفٌ But their swords are مَعَ بَنِي أُمَيَّةِ Their swords are with Bani Umayyah. The reason is because Bani Umayyah have money they give. But status-wise and in lineage-wise and in righteousness and good is you, Hussein ibn Ali. Like you don't have money. So people of Kufa are only with the person who's got the money. So when they love you, but if Bani Umayyah tells them to kill you, they'll kill you. فَأَبَى He refused. To hear what? Farazdaq has to say, إِلَّا أَنْ يَخْرُجَ Except he went out. وَاللَّهُ المستعان. وَاللَّهُ المستعان. That is what an Imam Ibn Kathir said. He said, وَاللَّهُ المستعان. Hussein reaches a place called Qadisiyah as he's moving forward. This time, Muslim Aqil is dead. Hussein Ibn Ali reaches a place called Qadisiyah. And when he reaches his place, this place, Qadisiyah, Qadisiyah is a place which is very known. The battle of Qadisiyah took place. Hussein ibn Ali, at that place, it reaches him the news of the death, of the death, of the death, sorry, of his cousin Muslim ibn Aqil. It reached him that Muslim ibn Aqil is dead. And he's at the place Qadisiyah. Um, from who? From Umar ibn, Umar ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. Because remember, when Muslim ibn Aqil was about to die, he asked if Umar ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas can convey the information or this wasiyah. So the letter or the information reached him. At this point, Hussein ibn Ali made the decision to go back. But before he turned back, he looked at the children of Muslim Haqil, who he had with him. Hussein ibn Ali had 70 family members with him, 70 of them. His own kids, his wives, the children of who? Muhammad al Hanafiya. Even when Muhammad al Hanafiya asked, Muhammad al Hanafiya, is the brother of Hassan Hussein Ali. They're both, both of their fathers were who? Ali ibn Abi Talib. Just they had different mothers. Muhammad Hanafi also to Hassan Hussein, sorry. Hussein, stay, don't go. Hussein said, looked at him and he said, Are you only telling me to stay because you're scared for your own kids? Muhammad al Hanafi said, La wallah. I am scared for you than my own children. I'm scared for you than my own, than my own children. Muhammad al Hanafiyyah, his children, Muslim Aqil's children, Hussein's own children, all of the whole family are there. So Hussein ibn Ali, he made the decision to go back. And he didn't want to stay uh, or didn't want to go forward into Iraq anymore. He realized that if Muslim Aqil was killed, that this it was all a lie. So he, he sat with and discussed with the children of Muslim Aqil and he said, look, listen, what do you think we should do? They said, La, don't go, let's not go back. Wallahi la narja, Wallahi we're not gonna go back. Hatta until we take back and we revenge for our father. We're not gonna go back. Hussein ibn Ali then said, okay, I'm with you guys. I'm, I'm with you. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, when he heard that Hussein ibn Ali was making his way, he ordered Al-Hur ibn Yazid al-Tamimi. He went and ordered Hur ibn Yazid al-Tamimi and said to him, go with a thousand men Hur ibn Yazid had and to meet Hussein in the part on the road. And Hur ibn Yazid met Hussein on the way. He faced him face to face. A place that was very close to what? Qadisiyah. Um, Hur then said to Hussein ibn Ali, he said to him, إلى أين يا يبن بنت رسول الله? Where do you want to go, the son of the daughter of the messenger? Where are you heading? 
And then he said, إِلَى الْعِرَاقِ I'm going to lose Iraq. حُرُّ بْنِ يَزِيدِ التَّمِيمِ said, فَإِنِّي آمُرُكَ I order you and tarja to go back. وَأَلَّا يَبْتَلِيَنِ اللَّهُ بِكْ And Allah doesn't test me with you. I mean, I don't want to harm you, Hussein. Go back. There's nothing here for you. Go back. إِرْجِعْ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَتَيْتِ Go back to where you came from. Or, إِذْهَبْ إِلَى الشَّامِ Or go to Sham. إِلَى حَيْثُ يَزِيدِ Or go to Yazid, Ibn Mu'awiyah. لَا تَقْدُمْ إِلَى الْكُوفَةِ Don't go forward to Kufa. Hussein refused. And then Hussein started to move with his family forward towards Iraq. And Hurr ibn Yazid, يُعَاكِسُ وَيَمْنَعُ Would go block him from it and he would push him back. فَقَالَ لَهُ الْحُسَيْنِ Hussein said to him, اِبْتَعِدْ عَنِّي ثَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ May your mother lose you. Get away from me. Move away from me. Hurr ibn Yazid at Tamimi looked at Hussein ibn Ali and he said to him, Wallahi by Allah, لَوْ قَالَهَا غَيْرُكَ If somebody other than you was to say that statement, من العرب from the Arabs لَقْتَصَصْتُ مِنْهُ I would have taken blood money from him وَمِنْ أُمِّي and from his mother وَلَكِنْ بَتْ مَاذَا أَقُلْ وَكَنْ I say وَأُمُّكَ سَيِّدَةُ نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ But what can I say? Your mother is the leaders of the women of Jannah 